Hey everyone, today I have my hands on the Tamron 70 to 180 f2.8 G2 lens, and we're going to be testing this lens out for portrait photography at a portrait photo shoot on the Sony a7 IV. Oh, that's so pretty! I love that. That's amazing. Today I'm using the 70 to 180 millimeter f2.8 Di3 VC VXD G2, that is the full name of the lens, on my Sony a7 IV camera body. I also have a review and photo shoot of the first generation Tamron 70 to 180 f2.8, which I did on the Sony a7 III up on my channel. I'll leave a link down below if you want to watch that. That's cool, like over your shoulder, if you like look at me kind of from the side. I thought it would be fun to revisit this location that I used originally and do my photo shoot with the G2 here as well. This lens weighs 855 grams, which is quite lightweight for a telephoto zoom lens like this. In comparison, it is heavier than the original Tamron 70 to 180 f2.8, which weighs 810 grams. Let's do some sitting down as well. If you sit like side on to me, so we have like your knees up. Oh, that looks so cool there. Looks like you're in a jungle. But the G2 is lighter than the Sony GM70-200 f2.8 Mark I, which weighs 1,480 grams, and it's lighter than the GM Mark II version, which weighs 1,045 grams. This G2 lens is 156.5 millimeters long and features external zoom. It has a zoom ring and a focus ring. It has a zoom lock switch, it has Tamron's typical USB-C port, a custom button, and a custom switch with two settings. This lens has a minimum focus distance of 30 centimeters on the wide end and 85 centimeters on the long end. It also has a 67 millimeter filter thread. If you watched my original G1 lens review, you would know that I really love that lens and this G2 is no exception. This lens was extremely easy to use on the day of our photo shoot and I was able to completely rely on the lens and camera to take care of autofocus for me. And then, do you want to sit with your legs crossed, like a yoga crossed? Yeah. I had my camera set to IAF with continuous autofocus and I made sure not to interfere with it at all so we can get an idea of the performance. If you keep an eye on the picture in picture, you can see how incredibly sticky IAF is. It really doesn't skip a beat throughout the entire session. This lens doesn't actively keep AF on while zooming, but as soon as you've reached your desired focal length, focus quickly snaps back onto the subject's face. I do also have the 70 to 200 f2.8 GM2, and I'm gonna get some comparison images throughout today's photo shoot, and I'll pop them up on the screen for you. So the first comparison I'm getting is at 135. Oh, I feel like here there's like a little patch. That looks so pretty there. I feel like it'll look cool if you wanted to grab the skirt, maybe do some like kind of movement with it. I had an extremely high in-focus ratio for this photo shoot, which makes me believe this lens is definitely suitable for client work like weddings, for example, as you can rely on it to capture high quality images. Even though it looks like a bright sunny day, it was actually quite cloudy, so I had to keep a higher ISO for this portrait session. The reason for this is because I am using a longer focal length due to this being a telephoto zoom. The longer your focal length, the faster your shutter speed should be to avoid motion blur in your images. I also like to ask my subject to move around a lot while taking portraits so their posing looks a bit more natural, so in that case, I also like to keep a faster shutter speed for that reason. I love those over the shoulder ones look cool, where you're like to the side. They're so pretty. So please keep this higher ISO in mind when taking a look at these example images. I made sure to use the same ISO for the GM2 comparison images as well, just to keep it fair. I wanna get like a close up of that. It looks, the light's like perfect. 
This lens captures crystal clear images. It is very, very sharp while still retaining nice character to use as a lens for portrait photography. Skin can be a tricky thing with sharp lenses as you don't want to be emphasizing too much skin texture or too much flyaway hairs with super sharp lenses as that can look distracting. But I find this G2 lens is a nice balance between being sharp while also being flattering for taking photos of people. back here. I feel like um, maybe like a stretch shot would look cool here because I've got heaps of space up top. Yeah, that's so nice. And then do you want to come stand out here? So I've just moved Melissa to be closer to me here so we can create more distance between her and the background. Just so the background has a little bit more creaminess to it. I feel like that tree in the other shot was like a little bit distracting. That's so cool. I have a really nice shot framed up here, so I'm gonna get a comparison image and this is going to be at around 85 millimeters in between 70 and 100. There's no marking for either lens. But I've got lots of nice negative space. The light is changing a little bit because it's quite patchy, cloudy today, but I shot some photos on the Tamron in a little bit of cloud. These are gonna be very cloudy. For the comparison images between the Sony 70 to 200 f 2.8 GM2 throughout this video, I made sure to shoot them on the same camera body with the same settings. You can see the Tamron files straight out of camera look a lot warmer than the Sony files. Personally, I really like a warm lens since I primarily do portrait photography, so warm colors can be really flattering for skin. I also tend to edit my photos on the warmer side for that very reason too. Maybe if you do street photography or landscapes though, having those cooler tones from the GM2 lens is more preferable. This G2 lens features nine circular diaphragm blades, which produces nice bokeh with a smooth edge when using it wide open at f2.8. I found the bokeh looked nice and round towards the center of the frame, and it formed more of an eye shape the closer you get to the edges. The Tamron 70 to 180 G2 has a bit of a texture that you can see when you zoom into the bokeh. The GM2, on the other hand, you can see how smooth it is when you look at them side by side. When you bump your aperture up, which you can see towards the end of this video when I test out focus breathing at f14, you can see a nonagon shape to the bokeh due to the nine blades. Last but not least, I have a comparison at 200 millimeters and I'm getting a headshot for this comparison. show you the focal range of this lens. So Melissa and I are going to be standing in the same spot and I'm going to get a photo at each of the main focal lengths of the lens. So I'm going to start at 70 millimeters and then we'll do 100 and then I'll do 135 and 200. And now I'm going to take a photo again at each of the main focal lengths but I'm going to frame each photo to look the same. Starting off at 2, 180, 135, 100, and finally, 75. The last thing I wanna do is compare the long end of both lenses, because something I get asked a lot is if there's much difference between 180 to 200 millimeters. So I'm gonna get the same shot at 180 on both lenses, and then the same shot at 200 on the 70 to 200. All right, perfect. 
So this is at 180 for the 70 to 200 and now at 200. The lens flare causes a bit of ghosting, which I personally love using to make my backlit photos look dreamy. The lens flare shapes are quite faint as well, which would make this easier to blend into your photos. Next, I have video tests to share with you, also taken on the Sony a7 IV. Again, here I'm letting the camera and lens do all the work with my settings set to IAF and continuous autofocus. Focus is nice and sticky on the subject and the image quality looks great in my opinion. The footage is so sharp with some really beautiful background to foreground separation. When I hide my face from the camera, it's very quick to find focus again. I do really like how snappy this lens is with focusing. This G2 also does a decent job at keeping focus on a moving subject. You can see it slipping a little bit here and there, especially when I'm either moving really quickly or as I get pretty close to the camera. I'm also impressed that the video performance is virtually the same whether you are on the wide 70mm end or the longer 180mm end. Either way, focusing is very responsive and the image quality looks amazing. Overall, I am super impressed with this lens. It's hard to say if it's a big improvement from the first version since I used that lens on a different camera body, but let me know in the comments if you would like to see a side-by-side -side comparison video. And as promised earlier, I also have these focus breathing tests for you to take a look at. Since I am using a very high aperture of f14, you can see the shape of the bucket a little more clearly in these shots. That is all I have for today's review on this lens. I'd love to know what you think of the lens and the photos down in the comments below. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.